All right, messing with a new caliber, a uh, six millimeter Grendel. These are 90 grain Sierra Game Changers. I'm loading with Lever Evolution. And let's see, using Grendel, 6.5 Grendel Lapua cases. So this is six mil millimeter Grendel, so I have to neck the 6.5 down. In order to do that, I'm using some Hornaday 6 millimeter Predator dies. And 6 millimeter Predator is the same as 243 LBC, is the same as 6 millimeter AR, is the same as 6 millimeter Grendel. Uh, I've got these loaded into 20 round Duramags at an overall length of 2.2675. Chronoed these the other day, did some load development, and CCI 450 primers, so starting at 30 grains, 5 shots, 30.5, 5 shots. Had a hard time believing uh, that this was 5 shots here. Um, the way the target was actually found was like this. That's how I found the target. So. If I snuck two more shots inside of here, that would be outstanding. I'm going to obviously choose this load to uh, shoot today and see if I can recreate that. Anyways, 31 grains. Started hitting a little bit of, uh, or getting some pressure signs at 31.3 with some case swipes. 31.6. And then 31.9, and this was uh, just the evening uh, at the range. So, already did the load development. 30.5 grains of Lever Evolution 6 millimeter Grendel. I'll be uh, verifying the load with a loop hold, and then switching the rifle to this Bearing Optics Super Hogster 35 millimeter thermal sight for a hunt tonight. Um, so, we'll go through that at the range later. Alright, it's about an hour before I'm going to meet Brian for a hog hunt tonight. Uh, check out his content, Carpe Seuss, on YouTube. Uh, appreciate the use of his range today as well. So, I've got the uh, 6 millimeter Grendel. And it's still wearing the loophole 85 by 25 um, scope. So, I've loaded up. Uh, 30 rounds at one particular charge weight that performed well during load development. And so before I take the loop hold off, what I want to do is send a three shot group down at 100 yards and just try to verify or validate the results from the load development. So hopefully it prints within uh, an inch or less. At 100 I'll be putting that little target dot right there somewhere down on some existing target materials at 100. We'll shoot three shots and then we'll see how it did and go thermal. Okay, so first shot, cold bore shot was here and the second and third shot are here. Um, this particular barrel does seem to throw the cold bore shot outside of the normal group. And then I'm going to use a previous zero setting that I had set for the 90 grain spear deep curl load that I developed before this 90 grain Sierra Game Changer. Uh, I was having too many pressure issues with the 90 grain deep curl bullet. Um, so I've rerun the same ladder of charge weights and the 90 grain Sierra gives me more velocity, more accuracy, and less pressure signs. So what's not to like there? Uh, I will take one shot and we'll see where we impact. And then I'll make uh, any necessary adjustments. I want to go ahead and be impacting at an inch and a half high at least, uh, assuming that the cold bore will be all right, real quick, uh, recapping the equipment that I'll be using tonight. We've got an OSS Helix 762 
uh, suppressor, running uh, superlative arms, um, adjustable gas block system, running a handguard that's about an inch and a half short. I will be taking the loop hold off and replacing with the Super Hogster and then you've got a LaRue MBT two-stage flat trigger and a full-size uh, stock system. So I will get the loop hold off and set up the thermal. All right, we're back. Um, took all of about three minutes to get that situated. No big deal uh, as long as you have a Torx 15 bit handy. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. All right, so we'll go down here and we will put the camera back on the target, take one shot, come back down, take a look at how it did, make any uh, adjustments, going for an inch and a half high at 100, and then we got to get on down the road. All right, Super Hogster is recording, audio recorder is on, and focus looks good. Those are happy. One shot. Just have a high amount of anticipation. I mean, I can tell that the thermal conditions are going to be good for the evening for the hunt. It's just an added element of fun. Alright, I was holding dead on, and it looks like I'm about two inches high, and uh, windage is good. So, let me bring it down two clicks, and fire again. Alright, made a two click, or two value up adjustment at native magnification. And let's go ahead and take it to two times zoom for this final verification shot. Alright, let's go down and see how we did. Okay, two value change on a warm barrel. That's a little lower than I'd like to be. I'm gonna split the difference. I'm gonna go in the middle. No need to shoot it. Split the difference, go hunting. I think I have cattle in the background. Got one that's 
picture of the clothes if you want to take it. Are you ready? Alright. Three, two, one. <laughs> We came away with two 100 pound sows and a 70 pound boar, and this has been talking about the sow that he shot. All right, this was my opener and uh, about where I was holding. And I would expect that bullet to just travel somewhere in here. Ben is using a Garrett Pro Pointer AT metal detector to try to find the bullet. Got something in maybe the chest area. Do it again. In the underarm? Okay. Yeah, but I can see it. I can hear it. There it is. How about that? This is a 90 grain Sierra Game King. And looks like the jacket separated from the core. So take out the jacket and then search. Yeah. search. And you, here you go. I'll take it. So there's some more in there. A little button. Okay. Ben's bullet penetrated well, going about 12 to 14 inches through the skull down into the chest cavity where it finally resided and retained about 52% of its weight.